and welcome to Tales of Ajidrame special interview uh, in our second edition. First guest in our studio is no other than the president of the Gambia Football Federation, Lamin Kababaju. Well, it's a pleasure to have you as our first guest um, on Tales of Ajidrame. And uh, the national team, the Scorpions, have qualified to the Africa Cup of Nations for the first time after 47 years of trying. This feat was, of course, achieved under your watch as the president of the Gambia Football Federation. What, in your view, would you say attribute to this achievement? Was it sheer luck or resurgence of Gambian football in terms of a crop of better footballers? Or was it simply better management on your side as administrators? Or a combination of all of these aspects? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Haji. Uh, uh, first of all, I would make, let me extend uh, season greetings to everybody. And also to thank you and your colleagues for giving me this opportunity to be, to be the first guest in the studio. And maybe the first guest also in the new year. Uh, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. And I think you have more uh, important and bigger personalities in the country who will really better fit in that position. But for me, I think really it's, it's a privilege for me to be here. Uh, going to the question, really, um, I would say it's a combination of all, uh, except one maybe better players. Uh, we've been having good players uh, all, all uh, throughout. Um, we cannot complete the list we want to name, uh, name uh, the number of uh, excellent players we had in the past uh, who had also tried uh, what couldn't be there today. Uh, but uh, there is some degree of luck also in life. There is also the, as believers, we believe in destiny. And destiny really goes with luck. Um, uh, what's prominent among uh, is the management. Uh, if you remember, you've been around. Uh, when we came into office in 2014, uh, our infamous adage was restructuring and rebranding. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been lambasted for at some points because of uh, the impatience of the fans uh, that you, you, we want you to give us results, not to restructure the brand. <laughs> uh, and then we talk about capacity building and, you know, uh, human resource quality building and other things. Uh, at the time, mm, the fans would not really agree with us because, at least some fans, a good number of fans, because the country has long been yearning for results at the senior national level, uh, national team level. We had, had very good results in the junior categories on the 20 and 20, on the 17 in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but for the senior national team, it has eluded us for many decades, as you said. Uh, but when we came in, we, you know, we had to set ourselves uh, target based on um, a strategy, uh, a strategic development plan that we developed, and then we did everything possible to implement it. Uh, maybe not to the letter, but at least uh, to a certain degree, uh, of almost 80 to 90 percent. Mm -hmm. And this encompasses a lot of things, and hence where we are today. Uh, before I go forward again, I always want to pay tribute to the, uh, to the past legends, uh, both uh, deceased and living. Uh, there are people who really talk about 47 or 49 years, but uh, those who really uh, started organized football in this country uh, predates that by, by decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all have the same ambition and objective mm -hmm. uh, to take Gambia football to another level. They have succeeded in many ways, but unfortunately, um, going to the continental flagship tournament has eluded them. Mm -hmm. And not without them sacrificing their resources, their time, their energy, and everything. And in fact, for those, if you start from the, uh, the Gambia sources uh, going backwards. Mm -hmm to as far as we could remember BOC Megajan and others. When football then, uh, organized football or association football was more or less personalized. 
you have to dip into your pocket yeah. your own resources to make it happen. Uh, we are aware of instances when even they will pay from their pocket for uh, air tickets to, uh, to help national team to, to, to travel. Uh, some of them will be paying the salaries of the staff of the association then. Uh, these, are no mean, these are no small sacrifices on those uh, gentlemen of the past. Uh, may Allah have mercy on those mm -hmm. of them who are not around and mm -hmm. those uh, few of them who are around to, to, to give them a longer life. So these could not have been achieved without them. Uh, those are the administrators, but you to go to the players also. Uh, prominent among them is Biri Biri. Okay. He had those who were there before him. Uh, who also tried uh, uh, their best, their energy, their sacrifice for the country, and unfortunately they couldn't do it. Yeah. That uh, it comes down to the to the Laos, the Asis Corps, yeah. come down to the generation Jato Sisi uh, and others, up to the, the Usman Jalos and others. You know, uh, that's it. The list go on. So all these people really have this one ambition is to take the country to another level. Uh, beyond the, the, the sub-regional tournaments, but to continental and global. And maybe, as you said, uh, those who are around yeah. will be lucky, but not without sacrifice. They did very well. If you look at the crop of players we have, uh, if not at least all of, almost all of them, yeah. have to take uh, some decisions, uh, we could have a lot of uh, some consequences on them. A good number of them either were either born, raised, yeah. or grew up in, 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 in other parts of the world, mainly Europe, where they had the opportunity, uh, still have the opportunity of playing for, for those countries, but they decided to answer to the call of the, uh, their, either their mother or father's land. Yeah. And, and, and they also have taken that sacrifice. So it's a combination of many factors. Uh, but I think at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's the direction, the leadership is also very important. And here also comes in the government also, okay. because at least they need, uh, this is a national asset, they need the participation of government, they need their sort of collaboration, their support. We really, we, 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 uh, we, we, we appreciate a lot in the past uh, couple of years, especially since 2017 when President Padam Baro came into office. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two years we had some instability, we had some misunderstanding. Uh, in the relationship was not very good uh, through the, the then mm -hmm. minister or the ministry, but that's a fact of life. Yeah. Uh, but since the, the former minister, Hantrame, uh, CDB took over and then followed by Bakari Baji, we didn't have much to say. Um, the support, what we receive from the government through their ministries, uh, it's never enough because you know, football is, sports is generally expensive, football is very expensive. Yeah. You're talking about Every engagement, talking about tens of millions of dollars, is in the Gambian context. That's a lot of money, because the government is or the country is not as endowed as some other countries, and unfortunately, we don't have uh, other support in terms of uh, uh, partnership and sponsorship from uh, corporate bodies or private companies, and that make it more difficult for the government. Uh, we did. Con Competing priorities, in this, especially in the social sector. Mm. Uh, as I always say, when the GFF send a budget of ten million dollars to to the Minister of Youth and Sports, and if the Sports Minister take that to the Minister of Finance, and then as he leaves, the Minister of Health comes in okay. with a budget of twenty million dollars, then you don't have strings, you don't have e uh, uh, oxygen in the hospital. What is he going to do? Mm -hmm. he's, going to, he's going to consider the Minister of Health. So that makes it much more, more complex. Make you understand, at least uh, with all models, he have had the opportunity of go, having some responsibility in the government in the past. Yes. And being a former sports minister, I understand how government operates. This is why I cannot, we don't quarrel with them because we know uh, what they have on the table. But the guest show, and we've seen the contribution has been increasing. Uh, they have sort of, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, they created some other avenue of getting more money for, for, the, for, for sports in general and football in particular. So sponsorship to the senior national team. Uh, these are all factors, as I said, uh, but uh, we work very hard and we ensure that our national, senior national team, football, is 100% uh, is professional now. Uh, because that's where you can, you can, you can maintain the standard. Uh, most, if not all, the players are playing professional. And they, you cannot afford to give them something lower because you don't motivate them. And this also cuts across even going to, to incentives of allowances and bonuses to girls have been increased substantially. 
the arrangements to facilitate their traveling and other things, especially with the advent of COVID. Mm -hmm. The government uh, coming in and hiring or chartering um, uh, flights, special flights to ferry them from one point to the other. And, and many other, the hotels uh, where they, ac they accommodated, uh, the, the standards have raised. Um, you know, when the COVID was at its peak, we also even uh, stopped the issue of sharing. We have, uh, you know, single uh, room occupancy by players so that to, to minimize the risk of, you know, uh, contamination or infection. Yes. And, and that that's has continued until the same when we relax a bit. But with the coming of this new variant, we have no choice but to go back to that. So all those things are there. And then finally, finally the, mm -hmm. the support, the encouragement and resilience mm -hmm. of the fans. And it's because of them that here. We, are, we, we are here. And then uh, we, we, we are grateful to everybody. So it's, they, as I say, the combination of the factors are really, the, the, the list is, in, is not is, is inexhaustible. So but these are the things that I can add on to what you said. Well, the Gambia's qualification to the AFCON 2021 in Cameroon was relatively small journey, despite few issues there and here. However, one thing that is now worrying the Gambian fans is the lack of test matches. Um, I know recently the team traveled to Qatar to hold a camp, but uh, that trip ended a failure mm -hmm. because there was no test match um, in there. Um, it's surely not the best way to prepare for a major continental tournament like this, would you say? Not at all, not at all, because uh, it's, it's a big setback, but unfortunately it's beyond our control. Uh, I just read a few days ago, maybe yesterday also, I mean the host country Cameroon were expecting Guinea-Bissau uh, to have a test match in town. Of, it, it couldn't happen because now the world, uh, the situation of this COVID really is, is scary. Uh, a lot of money were spent uh, or was spent, uh, millions and millions of dollars uh, to have the team come in Qatar in anticipation of the two test matches against uh, Algeria and, and Syria. But as we get into the camp, uh, we have experienced serious, serious uh, problems related to, 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 to COVID and other things. Uh, it's not what we desired. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, the, 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 the coach had only 12 players on the ground uh, who we could, we were, we could only train with. Uh, that's why without a goalkeeper, this is why the test match couldn't go, because goalkeeper, at least however bad, he must have at least two oh, yeah. goalkeepers minimum. So there's no team without goalkeepers that are going to play a national level, an official match, that's not possible. And this, the evidence are on the ground. And then as we speak, we still have uh, some constraints. Uh, we still have uh, some players who might not be available in the next, uh, coming days because of the COVID. But we hope by the time we have our, our match on the 12th, yeah. I think they will be cleared. But notwithstanding, as we said, you know, it's still going to affect the preparations. Yeah. So by and large, really, it's not the least, it's not the, what we least uh, expected. And then uh, we did everything possible to avoid it. But uh, this is the reality of the world today. So we hope really the situation can improve uh, by the time we land in Cameroon for our first month. Well, the Scorpions are zoned in Group F <coughs> alongside Tunisia, Mali and Mauritania. This is seemingly a tough group for us, given that we are the only debutant mm -hmm. Um, in this group. What do you think are our chances of proceeding to the next round of matches? Our chances, just like when we are drawn up in the, drawn up in the qualifiers from the preliminary, well, we started from preliminaries, we went to the group stage. Uh, so it's, it's as good because when we say so Angola, Gabon, oh, DRC, these are also no small countries. So, and we emerge top of the group. So anything is possible. Uh, we'll, we will not we could not afford to, to slide down. Uh, we do everything, challenge ourselves. The players, they know what is ahead of them. The coach knows. And then the federation and the government uh, also knows what is ahead of them. Uh, and we've been saying this, uh, the minister would say that, I've said it many times, we are not just going there, uh, just to go for the sake of going to our first corner. No, we want to come back home with respectable results. And, and anything is possible. So, uh, by... Despite us not uh, underrating or, or disrespecting our opponents, yes. 
but we don't fear them also. We can equally, you know, come out from that group on top when it is possible. And we are going towards that to go to the minimum, second round and proceed to the to the to the to the, to the next level, inshallah. One perennial problems confronting African football, the national teams of African football, um, is always been the issue of financing of the national teams. This includes the cost of uh, travels and accommodations um, to the payment of bonuses. This I need not to usually um, involve colossal sums. Uh, colossal sum rather. I, I hear the GFF is requesting for 117 million for the team. Are you anywhere close to that sum? Actually, let me just by extension, no, it's not the GFF, it's the National Coordinating Committee because now this is beyond GFF, it's GFF and the government and other partners. 117, we are nowhere close to that, that's the reality. Um, so we shouted, we cried, we, we cried and everything we did, but unfortunately, uh, we are nowhere close to that. But I can assure you that the government has taken this responsibility, full responsibility, and I'm so come what may. Uh, the required funds will be available by the time we land in Cameroon or before we come from Cameroon. That I can assure you. It's been a difficult one. We are still mobilizing resources. Funds are coming up. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, there's going to be a mega dinner at the State House that will be hosted by the President himself, mm -hmm. where you know the, uh, the public enterprises, the private sector, the big corporates in the country have been invited to come in and support His Excellency or the government in this endeavor where they are expected to, to at least uh, make some donations. Um, so we thought that also will bring us at least, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll feel a substantial gap in the, in the deficit that we have. Uh, that, that's, that's the reality now. Um, uh, a few days ago, uh, you know, somebody uh, confronted me on the highway, telling the president, I also want to go to Cameroon. You know, I have to take, I said, okay, fine, you want every government to go to Cameroon, but how much did you donate in the first place? Because go to Africell, the SMS, you know, to triple eight, you can if, even if, if you just even send a blank text, at least contribute five dollars. Teletons, we've been sitting at the GRT for two hours or more. Uh, mashallah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so to I say, well, look, then where are we? Where are, are we mobilizing ourselves? Yeah, you want to go to Cameroon, but how can we go to Cameroon? This is a national issue, but at least we also have some, so some, some little bit of, uh, you know, and, and what I'm saying is the, the general attitude of the people, and then it's important that we, you know, like all us who do, to make this as a national cause. You know, everybody say, want to really want to be go, I want to go down in yes. history, regardless of the amount that you can. Yeah. People call at the, at the telethon and, and donate 150 of this, well appreciated, and it's going to be documented. Yes. So at least then tomorrow, however, if, uh, uh, however small your contribution, at least you can sit down, whether anybody recognize, yes. recognize it or not, you can sit down, relax, and, 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 and feel uh, the satisfaction that at least I've contributed. Yeah. You know, these are things that we don't say. So this really hampered our, uh, our phone racing drive. But as I said, uh, it's still ongoing. I mean, today I received a call from one of the uh, corporations who so I wanted to make a substantial donation. Yeah. So it's coming up. But as I said, these are things that uh, not only the government or GFF can do, because government has other competing priorities. We really are the realities, and this affects our life day in and out. Yes. Somebody will say, why football, why sports? Yes, you know, I know. Now I understand the last time talking about 20-something uh, percent, or I'm not sure how many percentage of remittance mm -hmm. Uh, the percentage that remittance contribute to our GDP, you know, and this remittance doesn't exclude our foreign based players. You know, you know, you yeah. close to their interest, you know, how many of them are at least monthly or you know, occasionally be sending money back home either to, to, to carry out a project, an infrastructure project, for, uh, sorry, uh, housing project for their families or themselves. How many of them are sending sustenance? So, this, if, I'm sure, maybe if Central Bank could go further down. To able to, uh, to 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 identify the, that limit and how much of that is coming from from sports in general because you have not only football you have yeah. other you have other and uh, athletes yeah. outside who are also playing professionally there are two uh, colleagues in in Qatar you know oh, we, yeah we have volleyball we have Fatimata in, in yeah. Eastern Europe and all those so, and we have we have a good number of them so if you quantify that also it's not going to be small. it's an investment maybe 170 million is 
like uh, I can't remember the budget for Senegal and yeah. but the, the president told us if for them they are nowhere close to, to some country. Some country yeah. but it's okay, we can only say because they have it. Uh, but we, we choose to be there. So we also have to make sure that what what is what what, what really uh, uh, we're able to meet what you know we think is what we need. At least as a country, not only as GFF and, and this. So football and especially sports in general and football in particular yeah. really is contributing a lot. You look around, you see the number of improvement, number of families uh, whose really standard livelihoods are increased yeah. 10, 20, 30, 100 folds over the years. Really, and it's growing. So now it's, it's an industry. You know, it's, it's an industry. It's just not like fun. Yeah. It's not like because you don't have anything to do. Maybe you are not good in, in school, yeah. you don't play football. No. <laughs> now it's, it's, it's business yeah. that every parent should ensure that you encourage your girl child or your boy child to go into so that you or she can become somebody, somebody, somebody tomorrow who can at least lift you from, from the poverty. You've seen certain families, yeah. you know, I don't want to mention They've changed, yeah. they, they move from, from Marshall or from mm -hmm. nowhere, and yes. now Alhamdulillah, and it's through football and sports. Mm -hmm. And it's legitimate, you know, there's no, no, no earning more legitimate than doing sports, that's that's football, that's 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 earn your living and improve your life. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's why we are. So I think, I said the deficit is still there. I can't remember the figure now. But it's still very huge. But I'm, I'm sure, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, President Adam Barrow and the minister and the cabinet, they are very much committed to the cause. And I'm sure, you know, come, come rain, come, come shine, uh, they will just have another way of trying to see how uh, how this is uh, the history that we made for ourselves really uh, is nurtured and sustained, and we don't have any major uh, slip any on, on the way. Well, I wish so that's happened very soon. Um, it is often said that uh, the fans are the 12 players um, in that they help, you know, in pushing on their teams um, to glory. I wonder um, what the GFF has in place uh, to airlift a respectable number of Gambian fans to Cameroon. Yeah, already, I always want to say NCC. This time it's the NCC, that's not coordinating committee. <laughs> Uh, we've already discussed that, uh, a number has been identified already. We wish we could have taken more people, uh, but we have, we have not only the financial concept, but with this new uh, COVID, in the fear of COVID and other things, we are always scared of uh, the number. But certainly, we'll have a respectable number of people who represent the Gambia, and any time they appear in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the pavilion, at least they'll be, uh, they'll be identified. So that's, that's of course, the, the we are working with this person, Scorpions Fans Club, mm -hmm. uh, but other, other stakeholders, at least uh, within, within the fraternity, uh, and be given some, some, some quota, so that at least we have uh, uh, to ferry them to, to Cameroon uh, to care of the, the team. And you may wish to know that also, uh, there are two charter uh, flights or planes that have been arranged. Uh, there's a plane that will uh, ferry the national team. Uh, and that's going to another one that's going to ferry the supporters and other mm -hmm. members uh, of so other government and non government officials who will be part of it. So, uh, there it was, and a, a hotel has already been, a whole, for, a whole hotel has been, um, uh, has been booked for the government delegation, for the fans and others, while staff is taking care of the team and the, the, its, 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 its technical staff. So, uh, we sent if I about almost two months ago, I uh, sent uh, uh, an advance party to, to Cameroon, Limbe, who has already identified uh, mm -hmm. the hotel, and we have since made payment to the hotel, the rooms are secured, uh, and then we fought the, the first uh, proposal was to take 300 people. Uh, out of that 300, almost 150 will be from the fans' core. Mm -hmm. But because when we see the, the, the slow pace of the, the phone race and all that things, mm -hmm. and the advent of this new variant of COVID, yeah. uh, co uh, cognizant of the implications of, of larger crowds and the other things, then, and the, as I said, the financial concerns also, the number has been, has been reduced to 150, half. Uh, at least that's going to include the good number of the fans' club people who will be there to do what they are very good at doing then the rest always will be there as a, as, a, as a backup to support them. Well, Mr. President, I want us to talk, look back at some events back home. Uh, let's take a look at the domestic football now, which is in all honest, uh, is growing. And uh, thanks to the innovation of yourself and your team of administrators, we now have teams from the provinces participating in the second tier of Gambian football. 
the likes of Big For You from Kiang, Jara West, and the Wagadu FC from the URR. This is commendable. Uh, but, the, but then people ask why, you know, this decentralization is not reflected in the national team. I know you are not a coach or the head coach, but will you wish to see um, a home base players feature more prominently in our national team? Sometimes this question baffles me because uh, who uh, any home base player who really has that, uh, as you said, uh, would have that uh, potential to uh, feature prominently in the national team would have gone to would have gone professional because there's no player who would want to stay and play as a local player. You always want to go to professional. That's why you go to our, knowing that our league is is still amateur. It's not professionalized. Uh, what teams owners like myself, what we fair to do, yes. trouble and give you fair to go and back. Uh, you play maybe the half of the season. You don't even have uh, a match bonus whatever for some clubs. So at least the decentralization. Uh, cannot, uh, how do you call it, cover mm -hmm. national, senior national team players because, uh, as I said, we've, we've, we've already a professional team, you know, the court could have identified one or two assists in the professional, yes. prof prof his professional league, he would have one or two uh, or three depending on the, what they are mm -hmm. able to do. Mm -hmm. But on a, with all honesty, at the end, as time goes on, if you still feel that the person is not ready or he has somebody uh, in course, uh, better who we think can give him more what we want. Naturally, you go for that because that one. So we give them encouragement that we are on the line, and having them in the list, uh, even if you don't go, you are not finally selected. Yeah. Uh, give from you uh, an opportunity because those scouts and others will always look at that, look at your development. They will look. This one is playing for for Walidan in Gambia. Why would the coach put him in the list even though he not take him? Yeah. But that can give you another opportunity. That uh, that would. so uh, the the decentralization of football f for uh, like we have our league, uh, it can reflect on the national team, but that's entirely the domain of the of the coach. But uh, as I said, with all of us there, we have, we tried it. I remember in 2015, whatever, <laughs> we tried it here, and it was it was not easy at all. You know, there are many factors. There are many things uh, like you uh, with all. Some people are exceptionally good. Yeah. Some are exceptional. They could do it, like happening in some countries, yeah. you know. But for with us, and then in, in those countries, also why it's happening, they have professional leagues. Yeah, the like players have certain level of professionalism in terms of, you know, not only earnings but the organization and other things that unfortunately our clubs have struck, tried. Yeah. You can see some good development in some of the clubs now. So to be able to do that, like, the the, 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 the mismatch would not be that much. The difference would not that would not be that in. Yes. Uh, Coupled with the individual's uh, special talents and skills that he, he has, mm -hmm. uh, that can happen. But I think they, we concentrate more on the league development here. As you said, we have, uh, at least as for now, all the regions in this country have yes. the opportunity of uh, playing at the national, uh, the national uh, league level. Uh, LRR currently has having three, yes. CRR has one, and uh, URR recently has one. And uh, North Bank, we are there, but unfortunately the team, uh, third infantry, but uh, second infantry, in but in the, the, get it. Yeah. But North Bank has a team in the, in the women's uh, league. Yeah. So it's, it's growing, and then you see how, uh, if you are not in infrastructure constraint, you know, the league match will pro progress to the progress is like happening in summer, but I'm sure we'll be there very soon. We'll be there very soon. It's a big uh, achievement in terms of decentralization, but as uh, for the senior national team level, uh, the, that's a guy with the coach, and I'm sure he's, he's, he's looking at them. And then they have to work very hard to convince him that you know they are better than somebody coming from uh, from Ukraine or from from China. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Mr. President, either August or September um, of this year, elections will be held for a new GFF president. You are serving in your second and uh, four-year term as a president, and many are wondering if given the, the, uh, the recent residence, resurgence rather, of Gambian football under your watch as the president, will you be motivated um, to seek for a title? Oh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> it's a bit forward. 
Uh, it's a bit further, but uh, I didn't have any cause now not to, but it could happen. I didn't have any cause to tell you I will not do it. Uh, and, and it's very likely, but let's see what happens between here and that time. And then as how thing, things evolve, we have our own uh, personal plans, we have personal ambitions and other things, but notwithstanding, we think we, uh, I, don't, I'm, I don't believe in the fact that I have a job that I want to accomplish, so I have to stay longer. I don't believe I'm not that type of person that that's not my, that's because you never, it's never finished, it's never complete. Mm -hmm. If you have 100 years, you always want to do something. So I don't believe in that. And then, uh, and, 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 and I believe that really you, you, you do it within the time that you, you can do it. That's the most important thing. And let others come and, and continue. So um, uh, I'm not a fan of overstaying for the sort of thing I want to use that word. Mm. But the way we are now, uh, even if I live today, uh, I have no regrets. At least whatever I, I, I left and un, finished, yeah. I'm sure somebody will come and finish it. So it's not a question that's not, that's not, not going to keep me there. I know. So, so, <laughs> but there are other factors also that would keep yeah. me there. But as I said, up to now, I don't have any cause to tell you, no, no I'm, not going to, I'm, not going, I'm not going for the, for going for another time uh, come August or September. Mm. But still, maybe the other time we decide. I haven't have really uh, decided on that yet. Uh, anything is possible. And then the, the highest probability is to, 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 to continue uh, for another time. That's the highest probability. Because I don't want to sit down and say, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. But it can, it can be probable. It can, you can wish, but maybe something else can come up tomorrow and then it will happen. It's better than saying that, no, no, I'm not going and tomorrow you say, no. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again. Why? Yes. <laughs> because what I will say, what about it? If you have an if you have an advantage going up to the next level of Africa Cup of Nations, like qualifying to the second round, Gambians can say, "Hey, this is the guy that you know has the luck for this country." Yes. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. Whatever the case, uh, whatever the successes are or the challenges are, at least we are prepared to say goodbye at one point. Sooner than later, inshallah. Finally, Mr. President, let's talk about youth football and women football um, in two minutes. We've seen your priority was also your priority was also given to youth football and women football. Today, Gambia female teams are known across the globe because of the you know the improvement of football in the women folks category. So, what do you say to that today? If um, you know if you are going to rewrite you know what has happened within the years. Yeah, I think we haven't done badly in that in those areas. Um, as you said, um, the women's football particularly is uh, really is personally dear to me. It's not that they're doing anything different from men or I enjoy the game, but as a leader, yeah. I know, you know, um, you know, you look at the, the within your constituency, the most disadvantaged, the weakest area, that's what you, 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 you yourself identify yourself in. So they give that, that advantage to them, yeah. and they do others will follow. But if you don't make that, give them that due advantage, it's very difficult for them to catch up. So for me, uh, and when I look at the interest of, of the young girls in football, and uh, the, um, the, the inability to, to have access to it for different, so uh, I said, look, I personally champion the women's football, and, and, and that really has given them a new advantage. And I always tease my colleagues in the in, 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 in school and tell, look, I'm the champion of women's football. Sometimes, they deliberately, I'll bend the rules for them. Yeah. Because if we don't do that, you know, the, the, the club will always, all the time, yeah, be, be riding. Yes. So give them that motivation and encourage them. And that also really has had a big impact. Even on the parents understanding and allowing the, the girl child to play football, we have a series of sensitization programs here. Uh, we uh, ensure that personal take the front line to at least to let them understand as a parent myself. Uh, unfortunately, my girls are not good at sports. I'm correct, <laughs> I'm correct them the last one. Anyway, they are body bunkers. She is for her, she is, she is, she is prefer running yeah. than this. But anyway, this, as I said, so women's football, uh, for the first time in the history, we are now. To rank, we, are, we find ourselves in the FIFA ranking. Yes. Uh, at, at one point, if you look, you compare it to women's and the men's senior women at one point. In fact, 
globally and continentally, even women are on, oh, on yeah, 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 yeah. you know, for many reasons. Uh, but these are things that are encouraging and we ensure that uh, we register them also to, to, to competitions, continental, global, uh, like World Cups and other things. Uh, but you know, uh, we have the three teams are available, yeah. we have the under-17, under-20 and under and then the senior under Just team. Team, yeah. And then uh, they are not doing bad. And we have, we have the leagues, uh, the first, second and third division leagues, the provincial now yeah. we have all the regions are doing professional leagues. And then they also have like like the they have the opportunity of, of of graduating from the regional third division to, to yeah. the national league. To national league competition. Of them in the yeah. in the second division, yeah. and now for them to fight to be able to go to the first division, so any of them could could, could could become the champions in the coming years, and that opportunity will not cease. Uh, and then the and they also they, they, it's one of the, the the areas that we try to to try to subsidize a lot. You know, federation put a lot of you know funds to be able to. Uh, subsidize, organize them and support the clubs here and there rather than like unlike the clubs, uh, the main clubs you can fend for yourself and you know we you know, you know yeah. every have this annual subvention that we give them to prepare and also to ease their transportation. Uh, when it comes to youth football also, you know, as I said earlier we have uh, the country has just had some some good uh, successes yeah. in African champion and all the things going to the World Cup to occasions. So those things are then when we came we developed we built on the, the foundation and our recent performance in, in, in Senegal twenty end twenty nineteen uh, sorry end twenty twenty and then the uh, performance in, in Mauritania yeah. earlier this year. Really uh, earlier last year really uh, 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 evidence is that one can always call it call it. If you are not the consideration of the of the World Cup uh, uh, the uh, the the, 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 on the 20 would have been, would yeah. have been going Into there. The World Cup, yeah. So that's a thing, but and we also intensify our collaboration with the schools football association to ensure that the, the school football also is, is, is enhanced and then we organize a national competition throughout the country uh, for the upper basic and then the senior secondary and the, and the, and the and, uh, schools and then the finance are held and these are also with the support and collaboration with the FM. and these are the programs that we use so we really we are not we are not doing bad we are not doing bad we have a lot of programs and we continue to have a lot in terms of uh, women's football and youth football or class of football we call it. well thank you so very much um, mr president president of the gambia football federation um, thank you so very much um, for honoring this invitation like he said earlier on it's our first guest in 2022 and we hope this is not going to be the first and the last time. We hope to see him again um, with the victory, uh, or in a victory celebration when Gambia returned back. Mr. President, thank you so very much. It's a yeah, pleasure well, having you. Yeah, well.